But with this support, it did not fall over. That. <laughs> Just done taking a shower, and now I'm making this video. I want to talk a little bit about the way I print stuff, and the way many people print stuff, and like a better way to print stuff, or like a unique way to print stuff. Mainly the orientation of how you print a 3D model parts. Let's scratch this topic. Okay, this is done printing. As you can see here. How in the world did I print like this? And it looks absolutely gorgeous. The layer light is very consistent. It prints so well at this angle. How is this possible? Let's take a look. I got the model out. It's still on the plate. And look at this. How is this even possible with just a little brim at the bottom? How did I print this? This is printed with no supports at all. And I love the way this thing turns out print so well. I thought it was gonna fall over, but it did not. Now, did I come up with this idea? No, not exactly, but let's talk about how this works. Okay, so I'm gonna flip around. As you can see that, that is all the supports that was used in this print. Oh my gosh, that is so amazing. I never even thought about printing diagonally like this or at a angle like this. I did think about printing something like this. If you put the model in this orientation, you can have supports all over the back here and that is not good. So how did I even came up with this idea? Well, I got this idea from Slant 3D. You can go check out their YouTube channel. I will leave a link down below so you can go check out their video that talk more about this. I was watching Slant 3D. That dude, he was talking about how you print stuff like this diagonal. The layer line is consistent throughout the whole print. The only thing that's not consistent is this teeny tiny little part down here that's sticking to the bed, but that's only a small teeny tiny part. Let's take a look at the adhesion down here. So if you can see, this middle part is a little bit darker, and then this outer part is a little bit brighter and more in color and white. And same with this side. So this is what it looks like. This part happened because I was lifting this and it came loose a little bit. So that's what I want to talk about. If you want to print in this orientation, you need brim. You definitely need a lot of brim. This is 10 layers of brim. If you can see closely, the white part is coming off from the build plate and the darker part is still sticking to the build plate. So if you only have like four layers of brim, this thing might fall over, but my print did not fall over because I have 10 brim and I made this teeny tiny support. While it was printing, I was like, maybe this thing is way too small. I didn't realize it was gonna be that small compared to this model, but it holds. So let's take it off. It's very easy to take it off. Yeah, it could have fall, but with this support, it did not fall over. That Look at how easy that was to fall off the build plate. <laughs> if that crashed on the floor, it could have broke. Well, at least now I have something to put at the beginning of the video. So you might be wondering, how did I generate this support? Well, it wasn't generated. I modeled this with this on Fusion 360. This was another part that I print with this project. If you want to see this project, subscribe to the channel. Before I print that part, I did not know about it until I watch slant 3d video and I print it like this I print it horizontal like this as, as you can see here there's many many support here so I gotta take this off there's like a support here there's a teeny tiny support right there and even inside here it's printed like this and it almost had a failure of the first layer but I got it yeah so there's many post processing you gotta take off this support right here you gotta clean a lot of supports just to make sure that it's smooth finish so it's ready for your project. I think I'm gonna be printing many many of my project in this orientation. <laughs> like big box, big items, I'm gonna be using or try to use this as a support instead of generating support from Creality Prints or any slicer out there. So I modeled this in Fusion 360 with a little triangle. This is a 45 degree angle. And as you can see, the further that we go up, the less support there is. And you can kind of see the layer shifting or whatever this is called. It's not focusing. Okay, there we go. I gotta, I gotta stay behind. 
you can see that it's kind of wavy it's not smooth like the bottom part here this other part is kind of wavy I think this is caused by I don't know what this is caused by but I saw lots of reddit posts that the Camel Max has like a bad motor where the motor is like super cheap and it have these finish thingy so let's get rid of it that's it it leaves a little teeny tiny mark right there 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 but it's a lot better more sturdy than having this whole thing being supported and having lines sagging down of course we got to get rid of the rim it was that easy though and this thing when i generated it cost me almost like 350 grand of filament row with supports but with this teeny tiny little support and this i can just use like a scraper just to get all of those off or like a torch heat it up and then just press it and it'll be clean it only took 250 grams of filament it saved over 100 grams of filament with this teeny tiny little support if you want to know more about this style i will leave slant 3d videos and their youtube channel in the description so you can go check that out and get a full idea of how this work and the only thing that is really really overhang is these triangle originally i was thinking printing like this so that's why the triangle is like this and it doesn't have any overhang but when i saw their video and i orientate this like this those triangle are like very flat horizontal and that is the only thing that is overhang but it printed so nicely though of course the camo max i don't know why if you have a different angle like this if you have a different angle like this you can see that there's like a layer there a layer there a layer there that's thicker than the rest of the layer the camo max just have that i don't know why i wish i have the answer if anybody has the answer please tell me in the comments down below when i was modeling and trying to make this support i was thinking oh no i forgot about these rail here it, they're gonna need support because in my print in thin air it, it's not it doesn't print in thin air it generates the first layer that connects with this so it doesn't print overhang at all so you don't need supports right there the hole looks kind of bad but it's totally fine i think it's still very very usable the only minor defect that i can tell is this i don't know why it did that it's like extra filament but these are really easy to get rid of just use your fingernail and it's gone i just gotta fix this but with everything right even mode injection plastic you see that they have these teeny tiny little mark let's say you buy the toy that they mold it in two pieces and they put it together you can see the seam in the middle and at the very top of the mold injection pony doll toy the my, my two thumb is the pony doll's head you see that they cut the mold injection right there so it's like that and then they extrude molten plastic from the top and there's like a teeny tiny plastic thing that goes up they cut that and then when you buy it at the store you see that there's little teeny tiny bump at the unicorn or the pony's head so it's just basically like that next time i'm gonna make this smaller but with more support and that is gonna come off cleaner easier and it'll be so much better if you want to see more stuff like this more 3d models related 3d printings related more of the camo max and more of how to print stuff like big like this subscribe to the channel it's free it doesn't cost you anything comment down below what do you think about this and are you gonna try to use this on your next project and as always keep on printing